just going to do a weekly update. Um, it's one o'clock in the morning, so I'm off to bed in a minute. Got computers updating, got stuff going on in the background, but I'm just finishing my cup of tea and I'm off to bed myself. Um, first thing is the lock's turned up, so I'm quite happy with that because what I do, and this is why I say you can do locksmithing yourself. A lot of this is just down to dexterity. A um, bit of practice, once you get the hang of it, it's one of those life skills that you don't forget. I mean, it's a basic lock pick kit. And this is a rake, you rake it through, keep it pinned down, use a lever to hold it, and then just work your way through each pin until you get the hang of it. And this, is, this type of lock is what a majority of the locks I come across here in Spain. Um, and the other type, the yellow locks, which are the ones with the teeth on it, and I can pick those in no time already. Um, so, yeah, things are getting there. Um, this is a new type of picking for me, which is why when I've got videos uploading or um, I'm doing something else um, where I'm just sort of sat here, like for example, waiting for a phone call, uh, I will sit and pick the locks until I get until I'm 100% with it. The next thing on the list is my air conditioning stuff. Um, I'm going to book a course. I've been talking to some of my friends over in the UK that are actually from air conditioning. But like I said, I don't want a full blown air con course. <laughs> Full, full, full blown air conditioning course. Um, firstly, if I wanted to do that full time in the UK, I actually get paid more than double what the guys get paid anyway, um, doing my consultancy. So I'm no interest in it as a career. It's only for Spain. Because um, the thing is, I want to get to that point where I can just potter around and suit myself and just use it as a backup. Because um, obviously one of the things I have got is regular cash generation in multiple sources, but I keep stacking them up. Uh, somebody was asking about the English. Well, April does the English already. Denise is doing English as well, which is another friend of ours. Um, so for me, um, it's just not as viable it was, as it was. And it wasn't. It, it's um, it was something I was looking at, and I can still teach English now. It wouldn't be hard for me to get students. A lot of students actually find my accent quite easy to understand, which is another reason that it's quite quite an easy sell for me. Let me turn this fan down to make it a bit quieter. Um, but to be honest, the amount of time involved for me is just not worth it. Um, if I if I said I'd made two and a half thousand dollars this week in two days, um, you can see why. Um, my skills are better off elsewhere. Um, I'm also looking at doing some consultants in the UK because there has, has been something come up that we might be looking at buying, keeping all that very quiet th at the minute until we decide what we're going to do with it. Um, I do want to move from this house, Naples the same. This area is not as good as La Mata, nowhere near. And <laughs> funny enough, everybody that's moved up to La Mata or gone the other way and come back have all said exactly the same. Um, I've got to admit, if somebody asks me, are you going to move to where's better, Torreca or La Mata, it will be La Mata every single time. And everybody I've spoken to is exactly the same, so it's not just me. Um, it's, it's okay, you know, it's not fantastic, but I do find in La Mata it's got that village um, atmosphere where everybody knows each other. Um, you sat between the nature park and the beach every day. You go down to the beach, go for a walk. Da da da. It's that nice um, environment that surrounds you. Uh, this area is a bit too industrial for me. I've got like <laughs> got some businesses over there um, on on the front there. Then we've got our development, and then we've got developments to the side, etc. Um, it's just not as yeah. It's just not the same. <laughs> it's got no community feel to it. Um, so we'll move when we can find something right, not in a rush. I mean, we spend most of our time up in the matter anyway. Um, <coughs> as you may, may have noticed, I think I brought it up the other day on another video, um, we were at the quiz night again, because um, we go there every Thursday um, for quiz night when we can. Um, it's a nice cheap night. Kids enjoy it, you know, it's that sort of kids doing their own thing um, in an adult environment, you know, sitting there eating ice cream and crisps and stuff, the sort of stuff you remember when you were older. Um, 
at the same time answering some of the questions because the, we do have some of the rounds where it's like billiards or something else and my son does most of those because if he's going to be stuck there all night he can be part of the team um, so yeah that's, that's going on the aircon stuff I'm looking at ordering equipment I'm also looking at um, gearing up uh, for a second vehicle um, ordering a load of stuff down from Screwfix and getting some um, basic tools you know that or if a contract comes up in the West Midlands I'll be driving the car over to the UK and I'll pick up all my tools that are in the UK because what you may not be aware is I have a van full of tool kits uh, tool kit already in the UK used to have enough for about three garages at one point um, when I used to do everything um, but here in Spain I just want to focus on the electrics air conditioning locksmithing um, looking at getting a key cutting machine as well and just setting up a small place which is more like you call up and get something done rather than having a shop where you stood there all day I can't bother with it I don't need it um, I just want to just potter around and do bits and pieces and just enjoy the Spanish life um, the crypto trading crypto trading is starting to move the, I am ex expecting the market to start moving in a positive way and they're already showing signs that that's happening um, so I would actually say on that front um, the crypto markets getting in a very good position at the minute there's a, a lot of new um, institutional type people moving in as well which tells you that they're preparing to move not telling anybody to invest, not telling anybody what they want to do, the same as anybody that says, oh, the crypto space is crap, don't invest in it. Invest in what you like. <laughs> invest in what you like. I'm just saying from my perspective, um, I'm not telling anybody what to do, and quite simply, nobody needs to tell me what to do either. Uh, it's just quite simply that the markets do seem to be on the move. Um, what else has been going on? April's mother's obviously gone back to uh, the Philippines and one of the things I will say about that is it was good to have April's mother over. A lot of people don't really connect with their in-laws and stuff with the Philippines. For me it's quite important because April's mother and father are really good to me when I was out in the Philippines and I know a lot of people get obsessed oh, it's about money. It's nothing to do about money. I mean at the end of the day they just did stuff because they're nice people and that's the way they're well known that's why um, April's father's funeral there was a full motorcade with a lot of people because he's well known everywhere there's people traveling up by plane and everything for his funeral um, he's just a very good um, guy that has lived a simple life and never wanted anything he, he didn't didn't borrow any money from me he didn't ask me for any money he didn't need anything from me April's mother's the same see so, um, it's just that we, you know, it's just like um, a family unit. So it's quite important for her to come over, and it's good to see. Well, she watched the World Cup. That's what you know. But she's watching the World Cup now in the Philippines. <laughs> she's, um, she's, she's um, supporting England at the minute. Um, but yeah, so it, it was good because I mean you've got to imagine uh, she's worked all her life and her life's been pretty hard she was a seamstress from the age of 15 she was off to manila and making clothes and stuff in manila and uh, you know it's good she's she had a good vacation and it's set up now that she can travel over whenever she feels like it you know then day day i don't care you know that's the thing a lot of the time you know a lot of people get obsessed with money and stuff i don't care and stuff like that you know at the same time I'm paid for medical bills and stuff I don't care you know at the end of the day it's um, it's what I decide to do with my money and the same as yourself it's what you do that makes you happy what matters and it doesn't matter what other people think anyway but yeah my mother in law is fantastic anyway I, I've got no grievances with that at all um, it's about being beyond the spelling mistakes of the, the um, Philippines government in their government offices yeah spelling mistakes is the only gripe I'd have on that it's expensive mistakes for me they make the mistakes and I end up paying for it um, but beyond that all good um, I've just started sketching for the, the the partition walls going up in the the other two units over in the Philippines as well so that's going to 
begin probably in six weeks. And the reason I'm giving six weeks is because of the way everything got condensed with April's mother's trip, um, it hammered me financially a little bit. So I need to recover the assets, asset value back to the bank. And once I've done that, I'm a bit more relaxed and then we start moving forward with the next venture. Um, I think what, I, what I'm going to do with that is I'll put the central partition in, the ceilings in, or even just the ceiling on one side for now, the electric scene on one side, the bathroom in one side, and finish the first unit, and then do the second. Why are you doing that? Because there's no stairway to the second unit yet. There's another staircase got to go in for it. Um, so there's no rush on that. You know, on the left side, the right side just won't finished. Um, there's somebody already wanting to move into the last unit as well. But a couple of people apply, and I will be honest, um, it's for me, I just don't want any hassle with units. Um, as long as the units are looked after, I don't care. You know, beyond that, I'm not interested. Um, the funny thing as well, they've now got um, cable there, which is faster than what I've got here in Spain. <laughs> How funny is that? Although, once it does hit here in Spain, it will be unlimited, which is good. Although, I think it's unlimited there. Um, you just pay extra for it. So, I'm looking forward to eventually getting cable here as well. Um, it'd be nice to have 100 up, 100 down, because if I can get a couple of servers on there, I'll put a couple of servers online and move a lot of my own uh, stuff onto a servers, onto my own servers, rather than onto being hosted. The reason for that is I can stack a lot more stuff on them. Um, I can do a lot more with it. You know, at the end of the day, I can make them the servers faster and everything else at a lower cost. Um, so what we can see on that as well. I'm not in a rush. And what you can see is um, Center 7 was on about a gaming machine to play games. Um, I've got to admit, I don't play that many games. I used to play a lot of games a long time ago. Um, I'm talking back in the 90s. Um, I used to be in a big way, um, to the point that I was involved with several groups as well. Um, but at the same time, back then, I was working full time, doing all the maintenance stuff and everything else I used to do, then come home, and then my time was my own, so I used to be gaming. These days, or even when I went in corporate, you get home and then prepare for Monday. <laughs> You've been there with all the rest of the week, so you never see uh, you at home to sit and game or nothing because you didn't have it. I mean, I remember uh, even the dial-up internet used to be a premium at uh, Premier Inn and stuff. Um, so you, you didn't use internet when you were away. You were in some crappy hotel all night, but things have moved since then, and I'm happy for that. Um, yeah, somebody was asking me about the last video as well relating to the relationships. Yes, it's been a 100% fail rate for Western guys that have gone to the Philippines with a Filipino wife in the sense that they've never been to the Philippines before and they've basically gone there and just everything just changed. It's the eye opener. And the funny thing is, you may get some people say, Well, I'm not Mikto, I'm not this. Well, Sorry, you've just gone your own way, whether you like it or not. Um, when you ditch your your partner purely because you've seen what else is out there, because before you were in a bubble, you have gone your own way because you've ditched your marriage to go your own way. You know, you've had a complete change in perspective. This is why I say to people, travel first. You know, travel, and you can open your whole mind to all this stuff. Um, but on top of that, it's quite funny when you see some of the stuff related to MGTOW, and I've seen a couple of comments, and I'll be honest, if you put profanity on my channel, I generally delete it. I can't be bothered with it. Profanity is something I'm not a fan of. I don't invite it in. You don't hear me saying it, or very rarely I say it, and it's normally by accident because I'm trying to bite my lip. Um, what I... I think on that a lot of these guys are... are it's very peculiar... I mean, I'd have to say, I don't really understand anybody that would be trolling MGTOW <laughs> in the sense that, oh, whining guys, this whining guy. 
I don't worry about anything. You've got to understand, I have no gripe with anything. Um, so I do find it funny when people say that, because you do question, did you watch the video? And it wouldn't be the first time nobody's actually watched the video and just made a comment uh, just based on the title. It's like a lot of people do with the Daily Mail. Um, they just read the title, which is completely disconnected from the story, and then just go, you're this or that. It's like, okay, you didn't watch the video then. Um, but the funny thing is, one of the things I recognize is, like the video that, with the travel video, if you watch the one with the woman that's a couple back, um, you will see what I'm talking about. Because what happened with her is she completely disconnected herself from responsibility for the crap she did. Because at the end of the day, I would say there's a good chance that the guy wasn't doing anything wrong at all. He just had this woman that was having some sort of meltdown, not used to being in Morocco, etc. And then she accuses him of stealing her bag, everything else, da, da, da. I may get proven wrong. At the end of the day, if they find a purse in his house, then... But then again... <laughs> Then again, I couldn't even say that it would be his fault either. Who's to say she didn't leave her there herself? I, uh, it's a peculiar one. I mean, if the money's still in the purse is in the house and whatever, I'd say she's forgot it herself because she was in such a state. But this is a woman that promotes herself as being empowered and a woman shouldn't have to do this. And it's like, your ideology was built on stuff that was a lot of people sacrificed to get this um, far. Um, your viewpoints wouldn't go far in Saudi Arabia, for example, Syria, uh, Yemen. I. This is what the funny thing is that these people challenge places. They quite simply just let them do what they want anyway. Nobody's really bothering them. Um, but however, they wouldn't. Well, like this, she went to Morocco, which isn't. It's not the worst place on the planet. I've been. <laughs> I'm not even going to say where some of the places I've been because I'm probably going to get some <laughs> get some negative comments from people that live there. Um, but the the point being is, it, she was just stupid. She was naive, and she would feel seems to lack the ability to take responsibility for her own actions. And that, that's why I was sort of looking, I was looking at the MGTOW stuff, and you can see some of these people going, oh, MGTOW is this, the opposite of feminism, but it's a set, you know. So I don't think it is. Maybe for some people, but I find most of the stuff I'm talking about and dealing with is personal development. And as I said, women could follow most of the same stuff anyway. It's, it's not biased in that way. In fact, when I talk about MGTOW here in Spain, it's normally with women because I like to get their perspective on things and the majority of the women would agree MGTOW um, they can understand why a lot of guys have done it but also they recognize their own issues around what they've experienced in the UK and that's what I want to emphasize it's the UK um, because they see it from day to day now there was something I this is why I get banned from watching news night my wife my wife uh, was watching it with me the other night she says you should switch this TV off because my dad was the same when I'm in the UK because the <laughs> it's so biased I get irritated but there was a guy on there um, a very smug guy whose solution to the NHS was that those that have savings above a certain amount should pay that to the NHS. Bear that in mind for you. Because that figure will keep changing over years as more and more people have less and less, which is where we're heading these days. Um, so his solution is the council estate, woman, guy, whatever, that's never paid into the system, lived on unemployment benefits, got sick from their own tobacco abuse or something, should be subsidized by somebody that's worked all their life, accumulated savings, paid their house off, and left an inheritance to their children. That inheritance should go to the NHS. Where do I sign up for that? 
I don't think these people live in reality because if you take anything out of um, the ability to function as a human ability, which is normally um, self-worth is the, the initial one, you start creating other issues elsewhere. When somebody doesn't have to bother with things in society, this is why we have a growing benefit class in the United Kingdom, because people will pay for you to go so far. Um, in the same way, this is why when you get the Calais guys accumulating there, they see the UK as the streets paved with gold, because it's all given on a silver platter. And there will be a lot of people that go, oh no, it's not like that, it's not like that, it's like that. It's like it is. If you, <laughs> I'm a bit funny. If you turned up at Calais with the only thing you own is that Parker jacket that you got out of the skip last Wednesday, and everything else that you arrived from Africa on, um, getting a housing benefit and a monthly amount of money to live on—that's pretty good living. It's better than he was getting back home. And that's what I find when they start expanding this out, saying, let's take more from the top. Let's take more. I want to say the top. I'm not talking right at the top, because they'll, they'll just push that off to Panama or somewhere else. It'll be people like my father that has worked all his life and accumulated his own wealth, etc. I'm not really bothered what he does with his money, to be honest. I don't care. Um, but at the same time, that should be up to him. He paid tax on it when he earned it. He pays tax on savings above a certain amount. He's paying that already. And yet, yet when you come to the end of it, it says, well, we want all that back as well. So why was I paying tax on it? I might as well just been spending it up on the cheap cider. Yeah. I am not a fan of th these things, as you well know. <laughs> um, and that's one of the things. I had to switch news night off. I couldn't, I couldn't watch that stuff. Um, there, there is a severe slant to, to, towards socialism in the UK at the moment, but it's so distorted because on socialism they don't really talk about money. <laughs> they just assume it's going to come out from the money tree. Um, the figures don't add up. They never have done. This is why they always get in trouble any time they're in the, in the government. Oh, I was trying to keep away from politics today. Um, I'm not going to delete the video, I'm just going to carry on. Uh, what else have I been doing? Um, I've got to be honest, I've been researching more. I've been doing a lot more on reading, uh, starting to look at my cameras a bit better as well. The issue with the sound today was this bloody thing, iMovie, adjusting settings it had no reason to touch. Because you've got to tweak them in iMovie in the first place because it's on a separate mic. But for some reason it reduced it by 70% and nobody else would be near it, only iMovie. It's bloody Apple again. They do the same with their um, QuickTime as well. QuickTime's the same because I do some tutorials. I'll put like this picture you're seeing on the top, and then I'll have the desktop where they can see what I'm doing on an Excel sheet or something. They'll every time I switch that thing on, it disables the hover, so I lose this picture, and then I have to go in the settings, put it back on. And yet, at no point does it recognize that I do that probably about 60 times a month. <laughs> yeah. Urgh. Nothing I can do about it. Apple, a company that likes to self-promote itself, yet can't even manage the basics, which is on and off. Just leave it alone. <laughs> if it sets up, don't touch it. But beyond that, all good. All good. Um, I've got to admit, Things are starting to come together again. It's been a bit slow, um, but it, you've got to bear in mind going to the Philippines, coming back, being a tour guide for a month. I've lost about six weeks plus the week up to that. So yeah, I've lost seven weeks. Just called two months until things slow down to a halt. And now we're starting to move things forward again. I'm looking forward to things starting to head in the right direction again. Um, not that things have been bad it's just that because I've been doing a lot of things start going like that especially on other stuff I do um, for example if you're doing media stuff you've got to be constantly pushing it when you stop other people still continue which means you start dropping lower and lower in the rankings so when you come back it takes time to build that back up 
Um, somebody else asked me today, is it worth doing YouTube channels? I would say pick pick your niche right. Um, the Philippines oversubscribed, too many people in it. Um, it's also a niche that often doesn't pay that well compared to some other niches out there like financial niches or insurance, if you can get people to watch insurance and stuff. Uh, cooking shows another one. The other thing with cooking shows is put a spin on it in the sense of this is our latest ladle all the way from such and such from Massachusetts or whatever um, and people will send you free stuff as well. I've had a free food mixer um, on this channel. It's actually in, in one of the reviews somewhere. Um, the point being is people will send you stuff um, but ultimately I wouldn't say it's a career move. I think a lot of people end up with a career out of it, but they didn't start off that way. You've got to start off with something you're interested in. Myself, technology, gadgets, all that sort of stuff I'm into. Um, like this, what you can see is the... I can't do anything about the... I can't do anything about the uh, webcam either, because it wouldn't take this webcam, which is the one I want to use. It's, it's stuck with the, the one that's in the iMac, because the advantage with that one I can go, look! because there's another big screen here but I've just upgraded Windows 10 and a lot of other bits and pieces on this plus I've got another new machine down here as well a little HP machine um, which <laughs> now there's a funny thing on this this one, that new machine uh, it's, only, it's only about two months old the, the one under the desk is about six years old but the thing is, it was a server, so it's way overrated on everything um, because I spec'd it very high spec and it's got a huge double um, graphics card, that's why I had to adjust the power supply and everything on this one to take the graphics card. Um, and the funny thing is, I said to my son, well, do you want this one? This is before I got it working, he says, nah, it's old, it's an old computer, it's not a gaming computer. Um, and then he's seen it running today because it's because uh, while I've been doing videos here, it's been doing the updates, installing. Uh, so I'm going to click again, check for updates because obviously it's Windows 10. Why am I putting on Windows 10? The answer to that is um, this is only going to be used for messing around with. It's not a machine I'm going to be using as a server that anymore because the next servers I'll be getting will be rack mounts. Um, but it's mainly for when it will be been behaving he'll come and sit and play here and, you know as a reward thing the important bit here is obviously there's only one chair which means he's not sitting on there 24 7 he can only go on there when I'm not here and that way it limits the amount of gaming he's got access to but at the same time he was running Arc earlier Arc's quite a beast on the processor and memory so it ran like a dream on there it's running really well now, Center 7 asked me about a game. Um, I've got to admit, the game that I bought and installed, I can't connect to the servers. The internet's too slow. And there's nothing I can do about it. It's, um, except move house. <laughs> Again. But we'll be getting there soon. The Saga of Orange, that's another thing. The last thing. Now the funny thing with Orange, you know we've had this ongoing dispute relating to the internet that they never installed. Um, I was talking to, it was, it's on the Alicante channel actually, where Jaime mentioned about the fact, because I said I've never received any bills, I've never received any documents, there's nothing that even says a contract exists between me and Orange, which is why I've disputed since day one. Um, and they're now like, we, we will take legal action if you don't pay. And they've been threatening legal action for ages. And I'm like, send me the bill. Not on this text messaging and phoning me stuff. Literally, send me a paper bill so I can take legal action against you and your company. And they will ignore that message. And it's been the same message for months. Because obviously in October, it's been a full year. Um, and I do know they blackmail people into paying all this stuff. Because... What they do is they just keep this cycle of you will do it, we will do it, you do this, do this. And I, the funny thing is, I've experienced it in the UK. 
this is all part and parcel of the outsourcing. This is ca this is what happens when you, you get your call centers going. Just have a swig of tea. What I had in the UK is because my old property were, was a rental. Everything was on the card meter, so that the the uh, the owner didn't have any worry about any bills, because obviously we get hammered with a higher pavement because we're on the the old slots. So you'd have to go and get like say twenty pounds on the card, and then that'll be you for a week or whatever in the, in the UK. So the one day I get the this um, call from Empower. Empower saying you're now with Empower. I says no, I'm not. We're with British Gas. No, 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 you transferred to Empire, says, no, 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 we didn't, sorry, Scottish Power, it wasn't Empire, it was Scottish Power, we were on Empower, uh, we had gas, we had British gas and we had Empower, that's what it was, because um, there's two separate meters, one for gas, one for electric, um, but Scottish Power said, well, you, you, you owe us this money, I said, I don't owe you nothing. I said, I'm on, I prepay mine, I don't know anybody, it's on the cards, I put it in. Yes, but we need you to transfer from British Gas in Empower to us. I said, no. Yeah, but you, we need to put a meter in. I said, no, I haven't got a contract with you. Yes, you signed the contract, da, da, da. I said, no, I didn't. Now, about six, eight years later, there was this inquiry relating to the fact that people have been going around their houses and then signing all these contracts off as if people had agreed to all these contracts because they're on what, 20 pounds or 20 pounds to 80 pounds per sign up. So they literally must have gone through the phone book and whatever, tallied them up for the addresses and then just put, put them all in. Scottish Power assumed it's got all these new customers and started transferring things over on all these fake um, contracts and then start hassling people to pay them. And at the same time, not one of those contracts had actually been filled in by a person at those properties. Me being me, I just wouldn't sign anything anyway. It's just the way I am. Um, but eventually, like I said, about six to eight years later, I've seen something saying, oh yeah, there's a choir, it's in the newspapers, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, welcome to outsourcing. That's one of the things that goes on. When, it, when things get outsourced, all your information gets spread around. It gets given away. It gets sold. It gets manipulated. It's one of the reasons I'm into blockchain. Because <laughs> there's a lot of stuff in there that will actually secure our identities because they'll confirm them once. And then that ID can be utilized anywhere because it confirms it's you because it's linked to you. People don't need your other information. It's validated by a trusted source. Um, so, yeah. I, so this thing with Orange, I'm just waiting for a letter to come through and I don't think I'll ever see one. And the reason for that is there was never a contract because they're never installed. So I can't understand why somebody would spend a year do it, trying to chase me for money that I don't owe them because they never installed it. Um, but at the same time, I know they've been getting success out a lot of these, especially the older people that don't need distress. They just pay them off. It's just pure extortion. <laughs> but that's why I'm hanging out on this one. I want to pull it all through. And once, if they do send me a letter eventually. Um, somebody gave me some advice of somebody to contact. And April's doing it t tomorrow because they're, it's all in Spanish. My Spanish ain't that good for legal stuff. Um, and we'll see where we go from there. Because I'd like to keep this going to the point where we get to legal action. Because it'd be nice to actually promote how to do all this and how to deal with them. Um, Orange Spain is Orange France, it's not connected with Orange UK. Um, I think what's probably happened is the contract's been raised, the idiots at Orange seem incompetent to the point of not actually knowing how to disconnect things properly. It then goes to, the, I may be incorrect on that, it may be just that they're thieves, one of the two. Um, it then goes through to the collections. Collections try and demand money out of you and they will ignore you saying, I have no contract, I have no internet, I have no phones, I have no equipment, you've never installed it, blah, blah, blah. They won't even respond to that. They'll just keep going, you have to pay this bill, you have to pay this bill. And you'll go, how do I cancel it? You have to pay the bill first. No, I'm not paying the bill because you're going to send me another one. But you can cancel till you pay the bill. 
what's the process of paying cancelling the contract we'll tell you that once you pay the bill I know exactly what they're going to do you pay this month and then they'll bill you again next month and tell you the same thing but the whole point is as soon as you pay something then that's an admittance of guilt um, so from my point of view well sorry not from my point of view they, I don't owe them nothing because they failed to install. I, yeah, they never supplied the goods in the first place. Hi. But anyway, that's enough for today. I'm tired. I'm going to bed. Things do look like they're on the up for me. And I hope everybody else is on the up as well. I hope things are all moving solid for you guys as well. It's good when things are going well. And the other thing I can complain about is the 32 degrees we're currently having. And there is rumours we're heading into the 40s. Um... I've got a friend coming over from the UK. I'll have to meet up with him as well when he's over. I think he's out next week. So, yeah, thanks for watching.